Apollo 16 Panorama Station 1 The panorama was collected by Lunar Module Pilot Charles Duke. Flag Crater is above and to the right of Charlie's Shadow. Plum Crater is above and to the left of Charlie's Shadow. John Young is leaving the rover to join Charlie. Young and Duke touched down at Descartes about 276 meters northwest of Plan Point at 9.24 p.m. Eastern Standard Time April 20, 1972, about 5 hours, 43 minutes late. During 71 hours, 2 minutes surface stay, the two astronauts explored the region on three EVAs totaling 20 hours, 14 minutes. The first EVA included lunar roving vehicle setup and all set deployment. A heat flow experiment was lost when Young tripped on an electronics cable, breaking it. The rover traverse took astronauts west to Flag Crater where they collected samples and photographed the area. The return drive was south of the outbound track to Spook Crater where astronauts took first measurement with the lunar portable magnetometer, gathered samples, and took both panoramic and 500 mm telephotography. Apollo 16 Panorama EVA-2 The panorama was collected by John Young at the end of EVA-2. Charlie Duke is working at the rover. The lander can be seen in the distance to the right of the rover. The second EVA began with a drive south to Stone Mountain, where surface and core samples were collected at two stations in the area of Cinco Craters, along with a trench sample, penetrometer measurements, and photography. The Traverse continued west, then north with stops at five additional stations for similar work. One station was deleted from the EVA plan because of time factors. Lunar Portable Magnetometer, or LPM, measurements were taken near Cinco. The crew returned to Lunar Module and ended second EVA after 7 hours, 23 minutes, and 6.9 miles on the rover. Apollo 16 Panorama Station 11 The panorama was collected by John Young. Charles Duke is at the lander. Panning right from the rover the landscape falls off into North Ray Crater, the background rising up to Smoky Mountain. Just before returning to the lunar module during the first EVA, they deployed the solar wind composition experiment at the ALSEP site. EVA duration was about 7 hours, 11 minutes with 2.5 miles driven in the rover. The second EVA began with a drive south to Stone Mountain, where surface and core samples were collected at two stations in the area of Cinco Craters, along with a trench sample, penetrometer measurements, and photography. The Traverse continued west, then north with stops at five additional stations for similar work. One station was deleted from the EVA plan because of time factors. Lunar Portable Magnetometer, or LPM, measurements were taken near Cinco. The crew returned to Lunar Module and ended second EVA after 7 hours, 23 minutes, and 6.9 miles on the rover. Apollo 16 Panorama Station 13 The panorama was collected by Charlie Duke. John Young is at the rover adjusting the TV camera. Shadow Rock is to the right of the rover. Real-time flight planners deleted four stops from the third and final EVA because of time constraint in meeting the ascent schedule. Astronauts drove north to North Ray Crater where House Rock, inside the crater rim, was sampled. Returning south, the crew stopped at Shadow Rock for additional sampling, photography, and LPM measurement. The final stop near the lunar module added samples and core tubes to the collection. 
last LPM readings were taken at the rover parking site along with final rock samples. Closeout, including retrieval of solar wind composition, or SWC, and film from far ultraviolet camera slash spectroscope, completed the EVA after 5 hours, 40 minutes. Rover distance was 7.1 miles. The trajectory profile of this mission was similar to that of Apollo 15. Apollo 16 Panorama Station 2 The panorama was collected by Charles Duke. John Young is at the rover. The crater in the near foreground is Spook Crater. The Cayley Formation appears to consist of light and dark-colored breccias, possibly in interstratified layers. It does not consist, at least in this area, of lava flows, as had been widely supposed. The Descartes Highland materials of Stone Mountain consist of light-colored breccias and crystalline fragments. No bedrock was sampled by the crew although they tentatively identified bedrock layers in North Ray Crater and in a large crater high on Stone Mountain. Elsewhere, all large craters were heavily mantled with deep regolith that completely masks any possible strata. Boulders of varying sizes were sampled by the crew, the largest being the 20-meter house rock on the rim of North Ray Crater. About 95 kilograms of documented rock and soil samples were obtained. The material collected from widely distributed sampling stations, including samples of ejecta from deep craters, should provide for the study of the Cayley Plains region down to depths of 200 meters. Apollo 16 Panorama, Station 4 This panorama was photographed by John Young at Station 4. The rover can be seen in the distance to the left of the crater beyond the sample collection bag in the foreground. About 95 kilograms of documented rock and soil samples were obtained. The material collected from widely distributed sampling stations, including samples of ejecta from deep craters, provided for the study of the Cayley Plains region down to depths of 200 meters. The major trajectory profile differences from Apollo 15, aside from the trajectory differences necessary to reach another landing site, were the elimination of the command and service module orbit shaping maneuver and a plane change maneuver, and the inability to deorbit the lunar module ascent stage. Apollo 16 Panorama Station 4B This panorama was collected by Charles Duke at Station 4. John Young is at the rover. The equipment used during the geology portion of the extravehicular activities performed well with the following exceptions. One of the retractable tethers, yo-yos, would not fully retract. Post-flight inspection showed that the tether was operating but that the friction increased during the retraction cycle. The vertical staff of the gnomon was pulled off at station 6. When the gnomon was being unstowed, the leg assembly stayed in the bag and the vertical staff came out by itself. The Velcro hook patch, which provides the attachment point for a Velcro wrapping strap on each of the two padded sample bags came off before use. The Rezo plate on the Lunar Module Pilot's 70mm electric data camera was smeared during a magazine change between extravehicular activities 2 and 3. Sample return container 1 did not seal properly because part of a sample collection bag was caught in the seal area between the knife edge and the indium seal. The sample collection bags fell off the portable life support system mounts. The documented sample bag dispensers repeatedly fell off the attachment brackets on the 70mm camera. The screws came loose on one of the documented sample bag dispenser assemblies. 
The lanyard loop came off the penetrometer stowage release pin. Apollo 16 Panorama, Station 5 The panorama was collected by Charles Duke at Station 5. John Young is at the front of the rover. He and Charlie had decided earlier that the rover needed to reposition, so instead of getting on and driving it to a new position, the two picked it up and moved it noticed the rover's wheels are not sitting on tracks it left on the drive to the site. A total of 1,774 photographs were taken on the lunar surface with the 70mm electric data cameras using the 60mm and 500mm focal length lenses and four half magazines of 16mm lunar surface data acquisition camera film were exposed. At least one 360-degree 60mm panorama was taken at each station. The first successful use of a polarimetric filter on the lunar surface was an 80-meter stereo-based polarimetric panorama of the interior of North Ray Crater. The Apollo 16 mission conducted a Skylab contamination study. The tendency of a contamination cloud to collect around a spacecraft had been of concern to Skylab planners. Apollo 16 Panorama, Station 5 The panorama was collected by Lunar Module Pilot Charles Duke at Station 5. Mission Commander John Young is at the back of the rover adjusting the high-gain antenna. Two light flash observation periods were scheduled during Apollo 16 and these were successfully completed. The first test period began at about 49 hours and continued for 66 minutes. The lunar module pilot wore the Apollo light flash moving emulsion detector to provide a direct physical measurement of the cosmic rays that caused the light flashes. The device is worn on the head somewhat like a helmet and contains cosmic ray sensitive emulsion plates that surround the eyes. The commander wore eye shields during this test period. The command module pilot participated in the tests as a recorder. He was to have worn the moving emulsion detector, but, for an unknown reason, he was not observing any light flashes. This is the first crewman since Apollo 11 that did not experience light flashes. A total of 70 light flash events were reported during the 66-minute period by the commander and lunar module pilot. Apollo 16 Panorama, Allsep Site the panorama was collected by Charlie Duke. The magnetometer is beyond Charlie's shadow. To the right of the cable to the magnetometer is the radioisotope thermal generator, or RTG. In the foreground, to the right of the RTG, is the central station. Beyond the central station in the distance is the lander. The rover can be seen in the distance, to the right the central station, and left of the magnetometer. Just to the right of the rover in the foreground is the heat flow electronics package. The crew had some difficulty in closing the restraint zippers during donning of the suits. The suits are custom fitted and, by necessity, must be tight to achieve good mobility. Particular attention will be given to the self-donning of suits during training and a restraint zipper hook has been provided on Apollo 17 as a donning aid. The checkout of the portable life support system was normal on each extravehicular activity. Higher than predicted heat loads were experienced on the first and third extravehicular activities. However, thermal equilibrium was maintained well within acceptable limits even when the crew operated for a considerable length of time in an area of sun reflection from boulders. Apollo 16 Panorama, Lander The panorama was collected by Charlie Duke, standing at the 4 o'clock position in relationship to the lander. John Young sits on the rover next to the lander. At one point, the heat inside the EMU was so intense that the crew commented that they could feel it. Primary feed water supply depletion tones occurred during the first extravehicular activity. 
A warning tone was received for depletion of the Lunar Module Pilot Auxiliary Feed Water Supply near the end of the first extravehicular activity when his water supply was depleted. The purge valve pin on the commander's suit was accidentally pulled out twice during the first extravehicular activity while ingressing the lunar roving vehicle. Both times, the pin was found and reinserted without any adverse effect. To prevent a recurrence during subsequent traverses, both crewmen rotated their purge valves to prevent the pins from being accidentally removed. Apollo 16 Panorama Landing Site the panorama was collected by Charlie Duke. John Young is near the rover, to the right of the lander, collecting a rock sample. To the right of the lander is the flag, and to the right of that, the solar wind collector, SWC. The Apollo 16 crew was fortunate in that they had been assigned to J-Mission spacecraft from the beginning of their training. From April of 1970, they participated in Apollo 15, spacecraft tests as well as those of their own vehicles. The commander and lunar module pilot participated in early reviews of the J mission's surface hardware, of the extended stay lunar module, and of the lunar roving vehicle. The majority of the procedure development time for the commander and lunar module pilot was spent on lunar surface operations, and 40% of the total training of these two crewmen was in lunar surface science. Command module experiments were tailored to take advantage of the moon as an occulting disk while executing low light level photography of celestial targets. This effort required a considerable amount of the command module pilot's time in developing procedures which were compatible with orbital operations of the command and service module.